my sisters and brothers in Jesus Christ. Someone has dis described a biblical prophet as someone who can comfort the disturbed and disturb the comfortable. Jeremiah was such a prophet. He lived in a time when Israel was being threatened from within by corruption and from without by military superpower. This situation pained him because he loved his country and its people. Jeremiah was called by God to be a prophet to his friends and neighbors. He accepted the call with great reluctance. He began preaching to his people. He told them bluntly that their only hope for survival was to reform their lives and tend their lives to God. And his message was not acceptable to his people. They asked among themselves, who does Jeremiah think he is to pass judgment on us? On one occasion, the authorities flogged him publicly. On another occasion, they restrained him physically. And on a third time, they threw him into prison. Jeremiah suffered all these hardships because he was convinced that Yahweh had called him with a mission to fulfill. His love for Yahweh was such that he could patiently suffer insults from his own people. The similar line, the gospel from St. Luke describes how Jesus was rejected by his own town people. In fact, he was preaching his first sermon in his hometown, Nazareth. He read from the book of Isaiah, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. He has anointed me to preach the good news to the poor, to declare an year of liberation to the downtrodden. And he rolled rolled up the scroll and gave to his attendant and said, Today, this scripture is fulfilled in me. They were shocked and awestruck. They began to whisper to one another, Isn't this Joseph's son? Don't we know his mother Mary? Where are his credentials to prove that he is the anointed of God. The whisper grew louder and louder. Soon it became shouts. And suddenly, the situation got out of control. They rose up, drove him out of the town, and led him to the brow of the hill to push him down. But Jesus slipped away through the crowd. My brothers and sisters, while reflecting over Jesus' first preaching experience, let us remember those disturbing words of Simeon the old man in the temple. Holding child Jesus in his hand, he said, this child is a sign that will be contradicted. Those words would echo and re-echo during the ministry of Jesus. 
Just like the people of Nazareth challenged his prophetic credentials, the religious leaders would challenge his religious orthodoxy again and again. As his own people at Nazareth tried to kill him for what he was saying, so the people of Jerusalem would shout, Crucify him, crucify him. Jesus indeed was a person many opposed and spoke against. But that opposition did not deter him from his mission to be a prophet of his father. He was convinced that the father had sent him with a purpose and he was willing to carry out that mission at any cost. Friends, what about us? How does it apply to our life as Christians, as followers of Jesus Christ? Jesus said to his disciples, the world hates you, If the world hates you, remember that it hated me first. For no slave is greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they would also persecute you. Today let us ask ourselves how true it is for us to stand for our faith and convictions. We talk to young persons in high schools or colleges. Sooner or later, they will experience the challenges of Christian faith. Ask them what happens when they try to be honest in an exam and while others around them are cheating. Ask them what happens when they try to remain chaste at a party and others around them are doing otherwise. Or ask them what happens when they speak against abortion and others around them are defending it. Friends, what is true of our young persons is true of the grown-ups also. All of us must face the challenges in practicing our faith in our life situations. The very question is, are we prepared to face those testing moments in our life? Or do we have the courage to follow Jesus, our leader, in all situations of life? Our occasion as Christians is to be a prophet of the Father. In our world today, just as Jesus was a prophet of his Father in his time. And this is what the baptism and confirmation were all about. We are set apart to be holy, to be a prophet of his kingdom. So we are called to witness Jesus and his gospel by our life of love and service, by our life as, po by our life as prophets to disturb the comfortable and comfort those disturbed, to be the salt and leaven of the society, to be the light of the world. May this celebration of the Eucharist enable and empower us to be a true prophet in our time. Saint Antony of Padua.